Hello everybody and welcome back to Screen Stars. Well, I have a bit of confession to make guys. Um, I haven't seen all the Mission Impossible movies. Um, now if you've seen my recent top 10 Tom Cruise list um, that I've put up on the channel recently, a list of my top 10 favourite Tom Cruise movies, I say in there that you know, there's no Mission Impossible movies on this list because I haven't seen any since the third one and that is the truth. I haven't. Um, and I've not really been a huge fan of the Mission Impossible series. I thought the first one was okay. Really disliked the second one. And I thought the third one was, again, okay. Um, so, when this film, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, came out in 2011, I had no interest in it. And the same with Rogue Nation that came out in 2015. I had no interest in that either. So... Uh, as much as I like Tom Cruise as an actor, and I do, I like Tom Cruise movies, generally speaking, they're usually really good quality. Um, I had no desire to watch the rest of the Mission Impossible movies. Now, with the new Mission Impossible movie coming out this summer, um, I think the trailers look pretty good. And I'm sure at the time the trailer for this and Rogue Nation looked pretty good, but they didn't interest me. But also, I didn't have my channel at the time, so... I think it is my duty, guys, to give the two Mission Impossible movies I haven't seen a watch to see what I think of them so that I can review the new Mission Impossible movie that's going to be coming out this summer. So I have now watched Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol and this is my review for that movie. Now, um, my problem has kind of always been with these movies. It's kind of the same plot. Um, it's like Bond, but kind of dumbed down a little bit. Um, overly convoluted, complex plots uh, sewn together with impressive action pieces. Now, I think that perfectly sums up this movie as well. I mean, I was deeply, deeply impressed with this movie's action set pieces. They were staggeringly good. Um, and that is, for me, definitely what raises this film up. Like I say, the plot, which is, you know, the same thing we've seen time and time again. Some nuclear codes have been stolen by some baddie. And he's going to, you know, set off a nuclear weapon because, you know, that's what he wants to do. And it's Ethan and his team's job to put a stop to all that. You know, um, so it's nothing original, it's nothing new. We've kind of seen it all before. Um, some of the plot devices they use in the film are, are pretty amusing in regards to, you know, getting from goal A to goal B. And uh, For example, there's there's a scene, I'm, I'm not even sure where they were in the world. They've been... The Kremlin gets blown up. Um, it all gets blamed on Ethan and his team and the Americans. So they're stuck in Russia. And they manage to get on this train that, you know is IMF controlled and then they figure out where they need to go next which is Dubai okay how are they gonna get there because they've, they've been cut off the only equipment he, and he says it in the movie the only equipment we've got is what's on this train cart and the next scene you see they're driving along in Dubai you know and you're just thinking that's you know where did you get your jet from Ethan your private jet you know it, it's just some of the plot devices I think they, they dumb it down a bit it's fair enough it doesn't you know it's, it's that kind of movie but um, yeah but the action in this movie like I say is deeply deeply impressive I've always thought as well that all these movies the Mission Impossible movies are kind of Tom Cruise's personal playground when it comes to um, living out his fantasies as a stunt performer and all this kind of stuff there's always a climbing sequence in them you know there's always a charging about in a running sequences and diving from building to building sequences and um, and it's all painted to make him look magnificent and this godlike spy you know he, there was even a scene in this movie where he's the female agent on his team has to seduce this Indian rich guy in India because they need someone from him and she start, she's failing pretty miserably um, until Ethan intervenes and then all of a sudden, you know, 
he's all over her again because of something Ethan did. You know, it's like the, the team can't do anything right without Ethan's involvement. Simon Pegg's character, who I thought was great in the movie, by the way, brought some much needed humour and levity to the movie. There's a scene where they're in this building in Dubai and he can't break into the server. They have to do it from the outside, he explains, which then introduces us to the Ethan Hunt climbing section of the movie. Um, so every device can only be solved by something that Ethan does. It's like, you know, Superman, Ethan Hunt. Um, which kind of bothers you a bit. Or it bothers me anyway. Um, why have the team at all if it's just going to be, you know, just do it like Bond, you know. I suppose you can. It's a Mission Impossible. You have a team, don't you? But it almost seems like the team are pretty useless without Ethan. So there you go. But I did enjoy this movie. I have to say, it is very, very high quality. The, the, the action scenes are really good. It's really tense at the end. You know, even... <laughs> <laughs> there's a scene you know where they open this briefcase and there's a big red button in it that you sl if you s slam that button it, everything will cease you know that'll stop all the bad things that's happening um, and you're just thinking are you still doing that in movies now um, you could get away with that you know 20 years ago but it's not realism anymore and does we none of us believe that I don't believe that as soon as you open up this silver case that holds everything and there's a big red button in saying press me and everything will be all right it just makes you smile, really. It is quite dumbed down. But huge production values. Everybody's impressive. Um, I, I like Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt. I think he's he's only got better with time. I tried watching the first Mission Impossible the other night. Um, and it, it's the first 10 or 15 minutes of that movie are so cheesy, the dialogue. And it just, it, it was a bit cringeworthy, actually. So the the I think this film series has matured with Tom Cruise, and I think it is now um, recognised as a really strong um, action movie. So I am going to watch Rogue Nation next and give that a review. I'll give this a very strong eight out of ten. Didn't love it. I didn't fall in love with it. I think it is a really fantastic action movie with some impressive action set pieces, but with some really dumb stuff going on in it too. But if you can get over that, then you're going to have a ball with this movie because it is really, really well made. So there you go, guys. I will hopefully watch Rogue Nation in the next few days and get a review up of that as well in um, anticipation of the new one that's coming out this summer. So thank you very much for watching, everybody.